Hello! Here I am! Whew. So I'm trying, I'm moving along here through this journey of trying to program this neural network library. Again, I might suggest skip ahead, find some videos where I'm just using the library, but I'm, I'm doing this, I'm exposing this process of a person struggling to make sense of the world. <laughs> but for this video, I did actually make some notes. Um, and I want to reference actually a, uh, there's a nice um, a medium post about kind of what linear algebra you need to know for deep learning that I will uh, show you on my laptop in a second and, and link to it in the video where I read that post this morning and helped me kind of gather my thoughts for this particular set of videos. So what I've done so far is I've established that we need this idea of linear algebra in order to perform some of the math in the neural network library that I'm building. So what I want to do is take a break from the neural network stuff itself and look at the linear algebra stuff in a vacuum and yes, finally, actually, hopefully write some code because I want to talk through the math and implement the math in code in a generic way and then apply that to the neural network. Whew. We're going to get through this, everybody. Okay, so what are the core... Oh, so I have, I've, <laughs> I have some props. I found my old linear algebra textbooks from 20 some plus 25 some amount of years ago. So I brought these as props. <laughs> I was reading them this morning. But here's the thing. I, this is not a course in linear algebra. There's actually some great linear algebra videos on Khan Academy. Um, probably there's some other ones out there. I will link to additional resources in the description of this video. I want to do is cover the aspects of linear algebra that are necessary or relevant to the neural network stuff. Um, and kind of leave out the rest. So I'm going to give that an attempt and see how it goes and write code along with it. Um, and you'll let me know how that goes. Okay, so here's the thing. There are two key concepts in linear algebra. There's the idea of a vector and there's the idea of a matrix. Now a vector is actually something that I've spent a lot of time in previous videos in this Nature of Code playlist talking about. The idea of a two-dimensional vector an entity with magnitude and direction in a two-dimensional space. We use this vector for forces and velocity and all sorts of physics simulation, all sorts of stuff. But ultimately, this vector is just an x and a y. That two-dimensional vector from, and of course, it could be a z if it were a three-dimensional vector, for all the computer graphics and animation physics simulation stuff I've done in previous videos. We could think though about, a, we, can, we can consider a vector as just an n-dimensional list of values. And I could make the notation like this. And I could say x0, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. So this is a five-dimensional vector. There you go. So this is the idea of a vector. Now, one thing I should note is that you will see a variety of different kinds of notation. Um, you might see then am I still, uh, you might see things written like this, x, y, you might see it written like this, x, y, different textbooks, different styles. I'm going to use this square bracket notation for the algorithms and examples I'm going to demonstrate in this video and in future videos. Okay, so that's the idea of a vector. Now, if you also recall, we can do math with vectors and there are a few different kinds of operations. There's the idea of a scalar operation. Like let's say I have the vector two, com two three, and I multiply that by the number two. I could take this scalar value, the single value, and multiply it by each component of the vector. And I would now have four six. There also are operations that are referred to as element wise. This is the kind of operation that I did over and over again if I had a velocity vector and a position vector. So if I had a position vector that was something like you know, 2, 3, and then I had a velocity vector that was you know, negative 1, 5, I could add, element-wise, add these together. So the first element add to the, 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 the first elements get added together. So 2 plus negative 1 is 1. The second two elements get added together. 3 plus 5 is 8. 
So these are element-wise operations. Now, in addition to that, there is also something reference, referred to as vector multiplication. And there's like the dot product and the cross product. There's like the Hadmaru, how do you say that, Hadmaru? Anyway, there's, so I, I don't want, so I'm kind of reminding you of some things and I, I have a bunch of videos on the dot product. The dot product I use in a videos to look at the angle between two vectors. There's a, a pathfinding example. We really needed the dot product to figure out how to get a moving agent to follow a path. And the way the dot product works is we take two vectors and get a single scalar value. So you can see these scalar operations, a vector by a times a single number, we get a vector. These element-wise operations, a vector plus a vector, we get a vector. The dot product, and the reason why I'm going through this is I'm gonna use this again once I get to matrix. Matrix is where the new stuff is. The dot product, if I have two, three, uh, I'm, I just use these same values, negative one, five, so the way that the dot product works is we actually take the, if these were x and y values, we take the x's and multiply them together and the y's and multiply them together and add them together. It's kind of like that weighted sum thing that I was doing earlier in the sort of neural network in the perceptron stuff. So I would take two times negative one, which is negative two, plus three times five, which is 15, and I would get uh, 13. So that is the dot product. So I could take the next step and I could start to write code for all these operations for vectors, but I'm not going to bother with that because ultimately what I need for the neural network library is the matrix stuff. But I'm starting with the vector stuff because it's all going to translate. Uh, it's, it's all going to be, it's going to be analogous, but I should point out that this is all in, if you're in P5.js, for example, there's p5.vector.js. The source for the P5 is all on GitHub, and you can actually find all of these operations. Here's the dot product function. You know, if I look for the uh, add function, here's you know, adding two vectors together. So you can start to actually go and unpack for these 2D and 3D vectors um, how that math works in the source code. But now what I want to do is redo this, but not for vectors, but for matrices. So the idea here is what I want to now do is I want to understand, well, what if I'm storing numbers in a matrix? And why would I do that? Well, there are so many reasons. Pixels live in a matrix. Data in a spreadsheet is in a matrix. The weights of connections in a neural network can be in a neural network can be stored in a matrix. So there are so many scenarios in programming where the numbers that we're working with are stored in a matrix, and we can think of that like a two-dimensional array. Um, that we want to perform these kind of mathematical operations very, very often. So, what is a matrix? A matrix, instead of a linear list of values is a two-dimensional grid of values. And I could think of it like this, A, B, C, D, E, F. And this would be a two by three matrix. Typically, we refer to matrix by the number of rows and the number of columns. Two rows, three columns. So in that sense, we can redo all of these mathematical operations so let's look at these kinds of mathematical operations now with a matrix. So I could do a scalar, and this should be an A, I don't know, scalar operation. So let's say I have the matrix, two, uh, three, negative four, uh, nine. And if I were to multiply that by the number two, a scalar operation would just double all of these values. So this would give me then the matrix, 4, 6, negative 8, 18. Okay, so let's actually, let's pause for a second. I'm not really gonna pause. And let's, before we get to these other operations, let's start to write some code, okay? So what I wanna do is have a library that allows me to create a matrix of values and then perform a scalar operation. Let's go write the code for that. Now, I should point out <laughs> that what I'm doing, the nature of what I'm doing is kind of ridiculous because there is a 
math.js. This is an extensive math library that includes an entire matrix implementation. There is also gpu.rocks, which is a GPU accelerated JavaScript library for doing matrix operations. And, you know, I'll talk about GPU stuff in a little while later, but um, there's also, I think, uh, matrix.js, there's p5 as a matrix implementation, but um, I am going to write my own just to kind of understand how it works. And then later, as part of this library, I probably want to swap it out to have something more efficient that's going to actually you know, opti do these matrix operations optimally. But so let's create a new file. I'm going to call it matrix.js. And I'm going to write a constructor function. And I'm going to call that uh, matrix. And the constructor should get a, num a certain amount of rows and columns. And I should say this.rows equals rows. It's been so long since I typed this dot. It feels good. This dot calls equals columns. Okay? So the idea being that I want to be able to say var m is a new matrix 3 by 2. Something like that, right? That's the idea here. I want to be able to just generate a matrix. Okay. So for example, I can do this just here in the console now. Oh, let's actually go to index.html and add in the neural network library and the matrix library now. And I should be able to say var m equals a new matrix, 3 comma 2. And I can see, there we go. I have a matrix object with three rows and two columns. OK. Now, we got to come up with a way of at least initializing the values. And this is, this is 2 by 3, and I said 3 by 2, but whatever. So let's initialize all the values as 0. So how do I do that? Well, ultimately, I need to have a variable, and maybe I'll just actually call it matrix. You could call it values. I don't know what to call it. I'm going to call it matrix equals an array. Now, there are all sorts of sophisticated JavaScript ways. That, you know, I'm only ever going to put floating point numbers in these. I could have fixed size to allocate the memory in some optimal way. But I'm just going to live in the breeze, code this in the most kind of easiest, loosest, friendliest way, and then we can always come back and optimize to use some more efficient and optimal data structures later. So what I first want to do, again, the traditional way to think about a matrix is rows by columns. So I'm going to start with a loop through the number of rows. And I'm going to say every single um, row is also an array. And then I'm going to loop through all of the columns. And I have a J here, an I here by accident, and say then every single row, column, location is a value. And let's just initialize them all at zero. Whoops. So this is me now making a matrix of values, everything with zero. Let's go back to the browser and let's refresh the page and create that matrix again, and I should now see matrix has three rows and two columns, and then it has an array. Each one of these rows has two values, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is now we can see the data is actually stored in there. So I've got the beginnings of a matrix library. Nothing about this is optimal or efficient, but I have a library, an object that stores the number of rows and the number of columns and creates a two-dimensional array filled with zeros. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, so we've kind of, now we have the ability of a library to create this matrix. The next thing that I want to do is add a function that performs a scalar operation. So for example, let's add a function that's called multiply, which is, the wording of this is a little bit tricky because ultimately 
Vector matrix multiplication can mean a lot of different things. But just for right now, I'm going to write a function, matrix.prototype, that's part of the matrix object, all matrix objects. I'm going to call it, I guess I could call it scale. Let's just call it scale for right now. Um, equals a function that's going to receive a single value, n. And what do I want to do? I want to, I'm going to do this a lot, loop through every single row, loop through every single column, and say this dot matrix i j times equals that value. Let's call, I'm going to call this multiply. And then I'm going to add, quickly add another one for another scalar operation called add. And I'm going to uh, say plus equals. So again, this is this idea. I've written two functions. These are scalar functions. I just want to take a single value and multiply every value in the matrix by that value. Or I want to take a single value and add it to every single value in the matrix. That's what these two functions can do. So let's now come back here once again. Oh, I've got a syntax error. I guess I have an extra closed curly bracket. So I'm going to create that three by two matrix again. I'm going to say add five. And now let's look at it. And I should see the values in it should be all fives, right? Now again, we're not really seeing the nuance of this because there's not different values, but it started as zeros and then I added fives to it. And now I could say m.multiply negative three. Oops, oh, I called it multiply. And if I look at m again now, and I start to look at those values, we can see all the values are negative 15. So what do I have so far? I have a simple matrix implementation that allows me to initialize a grid of numbers by rows and columns and perform scalar operations. I can multiply or I can um, add. So I'm going to pause here, and in the next video, I'm going to do element-wise operations. And then we're going to start to look at other vector multiplication, which is really no longer the dot product, but we're, I'll talk about, uh, sorry, matrix multiplication. So I'm going to kind of break these out into separate videos, and I'm going to show you some interesting things about building a JavaScript library where I can actually determine what's coming in. I can reuse the multiply uh, and the add function um, to determine am I adding a scalar or am I adding a whole other matrix. So I'm going to get to that in the next video. Okay, thanks.